Well, thank you for having me here. It's an honor and what a beautiful day in a beautiful park and with wonderful people who love all things Western. And as he said, I um, am an author. The book will have been out officially one year come August 16th of this year. So it's been an exciting adventure. I spent three years traveling coast to coast on school breaks um, researching Amanda Blake's life and some of the friends, and I've met some wonderful people all across this country, and now I'm traveling to wonderful events promoting Perfectly Amanda Gunsmoke's Miss Kitty to Dodge and Beyond. So I'm going to read just a few excerpts and sing a little song that was written just for Miss Kitty. So, um, here we go. How did you land the parts of Matt and Kitty? Do you remember? asked the reporter of Amanda Blake and James Arnest during a Gunsmoke Symposium at the Los Angeles County Museum of Art in March 1988. With no hesitation, Amanda Blake once again answered the question she had been repeatedly asked for the past 33 years. Oh, I remember. They had no choice. I sat in the producer's office all day. At that time, the producer's name was Charles Marcus Warren, and I was working at CBS. One week I'd be working Red Skelton, the next week I'd be working professional father, or my favorite husband, and some weeks I'd sweep out at night. But I got wind of this and had been listening to Gunsmoke on the radio. It was terrific. I loved the show and was a big fan. I heard that they, CBS, were going to make it into a television series, and I said, woohoo, that's for me. I finally ended up sitting in Charles Marcus Warren's office, done to the nines. At the time, my hair was extraordinarily short, but I had some hair pieces. I had my hair pieces in a box, and I just sat in his office until he came in. We had a little talk, and he said, would you like to do a test? And I said, that's why I'm here. We did the test, and I got the job. Well, Amanda Blake's arrival in Dodge City, Kansas of the 1870s would fulfill her childhood dream of becoming a successful actress with steady work, with the added accomplishment of immense celebrity. In an article written by Dick Russell for the 1981 spring issue of Persimmon Hill Magazine, Mr. Russell estimated that the television series Gunsmoke had an international following of approximately 850 million people throughout its 20-year run on CBS, nearly a fourth of the world's population. Amanda Blake, aka Miss Kitty Russell, achieved astounding celebrity and to this day floats through the airways via cable television as well as DVD collections as the proprietress of the Long Branch Saloon and ever faithful love of Marshall Matt Dillon. One only needs to mention the name Miss Kitty, and in the minds of those who knew and loved Amanda Blake, there suddenly appears a stunning lady graced with hair the color of fame, flame and eyes of azure blue, accompanied with an uproarious, raucous laughter, enough to shake the walls. All journeys must have a beginning, and Amanda Blake's was no different. Her personal trail to Dodge City was full of adventure, fun, and love, the good days, along with bad days of heartbreak, doubt, and rejections. Such is life, and so the story, no, more appropriately, the trail, begins on a cold and blustery February day. And I take the readers from birth to death, and all that happened in between in Amanda Blake's short 60 years. On the heels of losing Marshall Matt Dillon just a month ago, it's sad that James Arness left us, but he was 88 years old, had an incredible life, had a great family. Amanda Blake remembered him as being a family man. He did his work, and he went home and was a great father. And he was a war hero. He took a, a bullet to the leg and Anzio. And that's why when you see Matt Dillon limping a little tiny bit, that was true. And, I mean, that was a true limp that he carried always. So, in honor of that, I want to read how James Arness was almost not Matt Dillon. And I think you will be surprised as to who was almost Matt Dillon. In an interview with Suzanne and G G Gabor Barabas for Gunsmoke, A Complete History, actor Denver Pyle 
recounted his perception of his almost moment with destiny. Denver Pyle was also a strong candidate for Dylan, and Pyle remembers his audition with Amanda Blake and Rayford Barnes, who played a marvelous heavy. He and Blake had rehearsed their scene and came prepared. It was taped, and Bill Warren came down from the booth, Pyle recalls. He was out of breath, and he said, this is it, this is it, we found them. The only thing left was to make a tape for New York and have some individuals there look at it and approve it. Then Warren took Pyle and Blake to dinner. As Pyle recalls, Amanda and I were in heaven. We finally had a job. After dinner, they went back to the studio and taped the scene again for the executives in New York. Subsequently, they heard from Warren that the top brass was very happy with the test and they were invited to Warren's house that Sunday so they could look at scripts together and select the first episode for Gunsmoke. When they met that Sunday, Pyle remembers Warren assuring him, oh, there's just one more guy we have to see, but he won't look good because he's too tall. The guy turned out to be James Arness. And of course, we all know how that story ended. James Arness did get the part of Matt Dillon, and he was the last of the four to be cast, and so it was a pretty amazing story. Um, Denver Pyle was almost Matt Dillon. Now, I talked to several directors and writers, people who worked with Amanda Blake, and one thing they said was she would light up a room when she entered. She loved the part of Kitty. She was very malleable, is what they described, uh, very willing to do whatever the part called for to make it believable and to be Kitty. She embraced that character. But once in a while, something would cross her and she would be afraid or angry and um, her temper would flip. It was very rare, but this is a moment that's kind of a fun moment that I found in a TV guide. They talked about it. Several resources talked about a fear reluctantly conquered. There were rare instances when Amanda's true red-headed fight and temper would explode to the surface while at work on the set of Gunsmoke, and malleable was not the adjective used during those moments. On one such occasion came as a result of her absolute and long-standing fear of falling from a horse. Early on in the series, Amanda was given a Gunsmoke script that called for Kitty Russell to ride a horse, side saddle, down the street of Dodge. Norman MacDonald recalled, she roared into my office, waving the script, screaming that she's afraid of horses. It was pure red-headed terror. When I finally calmed her down, she said, tell me, Norman, do you know a good riding instructor? She's been on horses ever since. Amanda's version of the same instance of incident was the following. For years, I was frightened to death of them, horses. And when I got a script one day for Gunsmoke and was told I had to ride a horse, I cried. I begged to be let out of that particular scene, but it was important to the story. Well, all that first morning I stayed on the animal. Finally, around three in the afternoon, I got used to it and began to enjoy it. I've been an idiot about horses ever since. One of the most pleasant parts of my interest in affairs equestrian is that I have a western wardrobe which simply won't quit. The cowboy instructor, given the dubious honor of teaching Amanda Blake to ride, was Fred McDougall, a member of the Gunsmoke production staff. And I bet Bob Fuller and James Drury might even know Mr. McDougall. The Wranglers worked a lot of those different shows. And Amanda's love for Kitty, she, she lived with Kitty all of her days. Over the course of many years on Gunsmoke, Amanda developed a great love for the character that became her alter ego. Kitty was just someone who stood up to the world. Kitty was kind of the counterpoint to Dylan, kind of the distaff of Dylan in certain ways. I always thought that she was much braver and a heck of a lot smarter than I am. Kitty was so strong and she'd carry off that things that I'd be absolutely terrified of. However, on waiting for Matt Dillon for 19 years, Amanda Blake declared, Do you think I'd sit around for 19 years waiting for some cowboy that's wearing a badge and just hanging around while I was successful in my business? I wouldn't wait 19 years for any guy. Fooey on him. There's other fish in the sea. 
So that's where Miss Kitty and Amanda Blake part company. Kitty had a tremendous ability to cope, Amanda said, which I don't. While in researching her life, she did have a tremendous ability to cope. And here's a funny little um, excerpt from a child actor. And he wasn't even in the credits of this particular show, but he was there and he told me about being hot, sweaty, and dark. And we can, re we can relate to that. They were on a location shoot, and Miss Kitty had been kidnapped, and so had a, a mother and her young boy, who was eight or nine years old. And um, so he recounted his memory as a young boy on this set, and he's being ripped from the arms of his mother by the bad guys, and he's thrown into the arms of Miss Kitty, and Miss Kitty needs to console him. So here's his memory from Pat Carty. Today he remembers the scene in particular with a mischievous smile. As the camera was rolling, Amanda reached for the young boy and embraced Cardi tightly to her chest. The logistics were such that his face was buried front and center into Miss Kitty's ample cleavage, easily seen and accessible with the low cut of her costume. All I remember was that it was hot, sweaty, and really dark in there. Director Mark Rydell stopped the scene with a cut and Amanda asked why. While embracing the boy, Amanda had so engulfed the boy's face to her chest that his face was not visible for the camera to capture on film. Mr. Rydell explained to Amanda that he needed to see the boy's face in the shot. With a humorous bravado, Amanda chuckled and heartily explained, well, you know what they always say, never work with animals or children. Undaunted, both performed the scene again, which met the satisfaction of the director. Later, during a break in the filming, several of the outlaw actors approached the young boy and teasingly offered to exchange places with him so they would be able to experience Miss Kitty's embrace as well. Mr. Cardi remembered wondering at the time why the actors were so enamored with the idea of such a situation that he found unpleasant at the time. As the years passed, bringing with them maturity, he finally understood why his moment with Amanda Blake had been an envied fantasy of many men.